This story revolves around an idea that was hard to believe. It's the story of a project in the heart of the Caribbean, challenging the traditional civil engineering approach to construction for a plant-based and climate-friendly solution. Bear with me while I tell you why. In the end, you'll believe too. In the Caribbean, and more and more so around the world, the social, economic, and environmental damages and losses faced consistently due to soil and water challenges are enormous. Combined losses due to climate change and the rising number of earthquakes, floods, hurricanes, and tornadoes represents millions of dollars. But also, more importantly, thousands of lives. So for a long time, man-made, costly, hard engineered solutions were really considered to be the only solutions to these kinds of challenges. But the high cost of these can make them very prohibitive to many. And in the long run, it's also not sustainable because it's very carbon heavy. Meanwhile, a long known and quite unbelievable solution resurfaced unexpectedly. But why is it so hard to believe, you wonder? Because we are talking about an innovative, natural and cost-effective alternative that can challenge costly and complex infrastructure methods. So, maybe the climate-friendly solution we were hoping for may have been waiting in the backyard all along. This is how the Building on Vetiver project began. When I heard about the BOV project, I found it very rather interesting. I was able to take it to my team to get their views on it. And um, they, they also were a bit skeptical in the beginning. However, they got their interest. Because people are really much more familiar engineers, especially with concrete and steel, the idea of a grass, you know, a plant that could do an engineering function was very, very difficult for people to understand. There really was a lot of not believing that this could possibly be done, could work, and that kind of thing. So vetiver grass is a unique plant species whose roots can grow up to 10 feet deep in the first two years. Um, so that just makes it a very powerful bioengineering tool. Altogether, this makes the plant very unique and capable of providing benefits such as slope stabilization, erosion control, um, land retention, which essentially can replace those types of technologies like retaining walls, rock baskets, and so on, using a green and much more cost-effective and socially beneficial approach. Moreover, vetiver is a C4 plant, meaning it takes in an extra atom of carbon, as compared with most other plant species, which are C3. Um, so that's really what makes it a powerful carbon sequestering tool. This project was actually really all about bringing back indigenous knowledge that was lost. This plant used to be used in a big way, but was forgotten. Um, the earliest documented use of vetiver goes back 5,000 years, where it was used for the essential oils and the roots and that sort of thing. So this project has really been about bringing that indigenous knowledge back to people and to community, where it is really deeply rooted in community. Back then when I was a child, I remember the grass, vetiver, but we knew it as metive. My parents, grandparents, they knew it as metive. I think the reason why the, the vetive disappeared is because the people wasn't knowledgeable. They didn't know of the use of it. They didn't know the uses of it. When all this water comes and fits here, then it will hit these roots. But now that a lot of people know the benefits of it, I find more people come and they're asking for plants and they want to use it because they realize it's very cost effective and it's easier to work with. Initially, when the team was introduced it, we decided to, to go with a pilot project to see how it works. And after the period, we were able to see that the system worked and we were able to increase our interest into it. The success of the project and our efforts here in Trinidad really lay in very strong educational initiatives, um, presentations with government ministries, engineering companies, members of public, educational videos, graphics online, but also very importantly pilot projects working alongside partners um, who had interest but may not have been quite ready to take that next step and where the IDB Building on Vetiver project really provided those resources to kind of go to partners and say, hey, you know, this really works and we want to give it a try with you. And um, 
And a lot of partners were really willing to take that step because of our ability to approach them in that way, offering that extra support. So all of this really would not have been possible without the IDB lab building on Vetivir project. The building on Vetivir program, I think it brings a lot of hope to the farmers in the sense that they have something they can look forward to, to protect their gardens, to protect their homes especially, to protect, most important, the crops, which is the livelihood of the Paramin people. Yeah, there's no question that um, as stakeholders and partners we're able to see the benefits themselves on their sites. Their um, interest and trust in the solution tripled um, or even went tenfold, you know, just seeing it work for the first time that really cemented their belief in it and willingness to take it forward and do more projects. Yeah, we certainly believe this because it could help more people locally and internationally. We believe that in the same way that everybody knows what mangroves are for coastline, that one day everybody should understand and appreciate that vetiver could be essentially the same thing for land. We believe that everybody in the tropical world one day should know about vetiver grass and the vetiver system.